Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I'm going to discuss some of the more common scams when it comes to buying and selling boa constrictors. So be sure to stay tuned because I wouldn't want you to fall victim to any of these scams. If you're new here, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future boa videos. First, I want to say that the vast majority of people in the boa hobby are honest and straightforward and they're not going to scam you. But unfortunately, there are a few bad apples and you really have to watch out for certain things. And these range from outright fraud to questionable business practices to just situations that are really not a good idea to get involved with. The first scam is especially relevant for locality boa collectors. And that can be that someone sells you a boa which is supposedly of a certain locality, but it's really not of that locality. And this can happen in a number of different ways. The first is that they just sell you a, a non-locality boa, like a normal boa from a morph breeding project, and they claim it's a certain locality. And they might use paperwork to back this up. And you know, a lot of people new to boas think that there's some kind of paperwork like with purebred dogs and they have the papers and that proves it's a certain locality. But really that's not the case at all. And let me show you some examples of paperwork. So this is called a CITES document. And CITES is the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. And so when animals are exported from countries, if they're on the CITES list, like boa constrictors, they need to have this paperwork. And so this paperwork, it says Peru, and it says boa constrictor, and it went with this boa, which is an Iquitos Peru boa constrictor. And I know by looking at the animal and its characteristics, as well as talking to the seller, that, who I trust, that this is indeed an Iquitos Peru boa constrictor. But if I was just to base it on this CITES document, it'd be pretty hard because it, you can see there's nothing specific. There's no picture of this boa or any specific information really tying this to this boa. And anybody could make photocopies of this and just you know send it out with any boa that they have and claim, well, this is an Aikidos Peru boa constrictor based on this. You know, conversely, if I didn't have this document, I would still feel very comfortable that this is an Aikidos Peru boa constrictor because of the other ways that I can verify that it, its identity. And I'm actually going to release a video in the near future on ways you can be sure that you have a locality boa that's of the stated locality. So stay tuned for that. Another type of paperwork, of course, is the receipt from the buyer or breeder when you originally bought the boa. For example, this is my receipt from 2006 from the East Bay Vivarium where I bought my Indian Python. It says Indian Python captive born at East Bay Vivarium. So this is great to have and I would strongly suggest you save any paperwork that comes with your boa. But this doesn't prove that the snake is a certain type because anybody could just swap this with any other snake. So you have to watch out with this paperwork and really look at the boa and ask the questions of the breeder or seller. Another common scam when it comes to locality boas is claiming the locality boa has a certain morph. And there's a couple examples. You see things called the hypo hog which is basically a hog island boa which has been crossed with a hypo common boa. And it's not a hog island boa, but it's often passed off as being a hog island boa and a lot of beginners don't know the difference. I've even seen hog island boas which claim that it's het for the blood gene. And the blood gene didn't originate in hog island boas, so the only way you can get it in is by crossing with another locality. Another example I've seen is um, someone had a Pearl Island boa that they said was hat for leopard. Another example. So often people will cross pure locality boas with morph boas and then try to pass off the offspring as being of that locality. Another scam is that people can sell a baby boa before it's properly feeding and established. A lot of baby boas, especially the island boas like this hog island boa, can be difficult to get started to feed. In fact, this guy didn't eat on his own for about three months after he was born. He had to be assist fed, but now he's eating on his own. And this guy will probably have ready to sell sometime in the spring. So make sure that you ask specifically of the breeder or seller that, and you know, make sure the animal is eating and that you're not going to have to establish the bow on yourself. And, you know, when you buy a boa, especially if you're a beginner, trying to get it to feed is not something you should need to worry about. Another scam can involve waiting lists and sometimes breeders 
are in really high demand because their animals are hard to come by. So they'll take waiting lists and you know you can get on the list and then when the babies are ready they'll contact you. But sometimes people will ask for a deposit. They want like a 25% deposit for the price of the boa to be on that waiting list or even in some cases 100% of the sale price. And this is before the boa is even born. So it's somewhat risky because you're giving the person money for a snake that doesn't exist yet. And this is one of the main reasons I don't do waiting lists. So maybe you've paid up and you've given the money and then the breeding season comes and there's a litter that's born, but you're a little too low on the waiting list. You know, you missed out because there were only eight babies and you're person number nine. So you might not get the animal that year, but the person still has your money. So hopefully you can get your money back. But what if the person spent your money already? Or what if the person pressures you to stay on the waiting list for next year? So it's a little bit sketchy. So I would be really cautious if I were you about giving anyone money for a boa that's not born yet. Another scam involves the way that you pay the breeder. And a lot of breeders take PayPal and you know I take PayPal and people have a lot of complaints about PayPal, but it does make it easier for people to exchange snakes for money. But sometimes a breeder who you don't know is going to ask you to use the friends and family option. And if you use the friends and family option, the breeder or seller doesn't have to pay the pesky 3% fee to PayPal, which allows them to stay in business. But on the other hand, you lose any protection. So if something goes wrong with the transaction, you know, you're, you're out of luck. So I would be really cautious if anyone you don't know asks you to use the friends and family option. You know, you can use it if it's someone you know, if it's a friend or family, or you know, a breeder that you know well, or you've done, you've done business with in the past. But if it's just some stranger and they insist on you using the friends and family option, I would take your business elsewhere. It's also against the PayPal rules for somebody to insist that someone uses the friends and family option if you're talking about selling goods or services. The next scam to watch out for has to do with people selling adult boas, which they claim are ready to breed. And it goes like this. They might say they have a pair of adult proven breeders and you can have the pair for $2,000. And these, the babies of this particular type of boa are worth $500 each. And this pair is certain to produce a nice litter of around 20 babies the next breeding season. So that's $10,000 worth of babies for a $2,000 upfront investment. So five times your money back and nothing can go wrong with this, right? Well, if someone is selling the animals, you know, at this $2,000 price when they could just hold on to them and breed them for five times the price, why would they be doing this? It doesn't make sense. So if breeders have a pair that's doing well, they're probably not going to sell it. Um, there's, there might be a uh, chance that there's something wrong with these breeders. They haven't been really doing that well as far as breeding. So I would be really cautious about buying animals that are proven breeders based on the potential value of the offspring that are to come. Sometimes people are just changing situations or they're changing their pro uh, projects. So they might be getting out of a certain type of boa and you might be able to get some adult breeders. But in general, the best way to get your breeders is to buy babies and grow them up. Another scam, which is really more of a questionable business arrangement, are the flippers. And flippers are people who buy up large amounts of snakes, entire litters, and then they try to sell them a short time later at a greatly increased price. And there are actually reptile distributors that buy whole litters from breeders. And of course, they have to mark the price up you know, otherwise how could they stay in business? And that's normal and acceptable. And a lot of these animals um, that, that you see in pet shops are from these types of distributors. But there are also other people who try to buy entire litters and they try to negotiate the price down from the breeder because they're, you know, buying the whole litter. And then they drastically mark the price up a few months later or even, you know, a few weeks later. So sometimes you'll see a uh, locality boa that's not as common and someone might try to get in and buy all the babies. 
so they can turn around and sell them a short time later and kind of corner the market on that particular locality. Although flipping isn't illegal, some would say it's unethical because it's not really in the best interest of either the BOAs or the future owners of the BOAs and it's really about the greed of the person who's the flipper. Another common scam that it affects the morph boas is buying an animal as a het or as a possible het when really it's not a het or it has no chance of being a het. So when you buy a het, an animal that's het for a recessive gene such as a VPIT positive albino like this one, you can't see if it's a het or not. And the only way to tell is to do a test cross where you breed it to a homozygote for that morph and see if there's any babies that have the, the uh, phenotype. Sometimes you can't tell if an animal is a het, but only what the odds of it being a het are. For example, if you cross two hets together, you're gonna get statistically, one out of four are gonna be homozygous visual for the recessive trait, two out of four are gonna be carrying the gene or heterozygote, and one out of four is gonna not be carrying the gene. So that's where we get the 66% possible het from that particular cross. And this VPI albino is actually 66% possible hat for anerythristic. But people get confused because an animal is either hat or it's not hat. It's not like you can be 66%. That's just a probability. So when I bought this guy, I bought him just for the VPI. I didn't care about the anery. I had no plans on using that in my breeding. And I didn't pay any extra. I paid the price of a visual VPI T positive albino. You know, the 66% hat was just thrown in, you know, as a little bit, you know, a little bit of a freebie, you know, for, if you will. That being said, a lot of people will price possible hats as though they're definite hats. And the really alarming thing is if you go and you raise the animal up and then you breed it and it doesn't prove out, there's really no fraud has been committed because it was never guaranteed that it was a hat. So anybody could say, well, this animal is 66% hat because who cares if it doesn't prove out, it's not like any fraud has supposedly happened. So anybody could say that anything is hat for whatever, but you just have to be really careful when you're buying possible hats and try to verify, you know, look at the parents, see what their genotypes were. Make sure you can trust the breeder, et cetera. And don't pay price for a possible hat based on what the price would be for an actual hat. Another scam has to do with a new type of boa, which is passed off as a new morph, and it's gonna be the next big thing. And they want to charge huge amounts of money, and you know, you need to get in on the ground level so you don't get left out. So morphs have genetic basis you know that you have to have something that's genetic and is passed on and they have to have a visual phenotype you know something that you can look at and you can say well that's associated with the more that morph so this gene causes this appearance however just because you satisfy both of those criteria i don't think necessarily that that makes something the next big morph it's got to be impressive it's got to be a phenotype that's beautiful and distinct, you know, like the VPIT positive. If it's just some slight variation of, of pattern that's not really all that impressive, it's really not going to be a, a big morph. There have been a number of these types of projects which have come up over the years. I'm not going to mention any by name here. But just because something is genetic and has a minor difference in the uh, characteristics doesn't mean it's going to be the next big morph and you should be really careful if you're investing on the ground level of any morph because there's a lot of opportunity for you to lose a lot of money if it turns out that it's not a very popular morph and it doesn't really take off you know the really cool morphs like the vpi albi t positive albino this is a small percentage of the total morphs out there and you know some morphs are really worth the money like this one others you know they're not really worth paying any incentive or any extra money over just a normal boa the next type of scam is where you buy a baby boa that is described as being perfect but it turns out to have a minor congenital issue and i did a video on this before but it's not that uncommon for baby boas to be born with a minor defect like a kink spine or sometimes they're missing an eye and these issues should be described in detail by the breeder when they're selling the babies. So sometimes the breeders will neglect to mention this, or other times they just don't pay close enough attention and they have a baby with a very minor defect that they didn't notice 
and then they sell it to this uh, seller. So if you do get a baby like this, you should definitely contact the breeder, let them know what's going on. And if you're not happy, tell them that you want it to be rectified in some way. There may even be some breeders out there who are aware that their babies have some minor issues and yet they don't disclose it to the customer and they're just waiting for the customer to find out by examining the animals themselves. So be really careful not to fall victim to these types of scams. The next scam on my list is a really questionable way to market your snakes and that is by raffling them off in internet snake raffles. And the way the raffles work is they might sell a hundred tickets at ten dollars a piece and they're raffling off a snake with a value of five hundred dollars. So someone could spend ten dollars and be the lucky winner of a five hundred dollar snake. However, you don't really have any way of knowing exactly how many tickets they've sold. They may have sold a thousand tickets. In addition, you don't even know if uh, the drawing was fair, if they actually did a drawing and someone won the snake. For that matter, they might not even have the snake at all. They could have just stolen the picture and it might be a total fraud. Gambling, of course, is highly regulated by state gaming commissions and underground gambling is highly illegal. So I'm surprised that these raffles could exist at all. But I would highly recommend that you avoid being a part participant in any of these internet reptile or snake raffles. The last scam on my list for today is a breeding relationship you probably want to avoid. And that is doing a breeding loan. And you might have a male of a certain type of boa, but you don't have a female and you find someone who has a female but doesn't have a male on an internet forum and the person proposes to well why don't you ship me your male boa I'll pair it up with my female and then you can have a third of the babies and what could go wrong with that well a lot of things could go wrong with that you put your boa at risk when you ship it to the other facility that it might come in contact with a disease at that facility you might not have any control over the care your animal is receiving at the other facility. And then when you do the breeding itself, and let's say you have the, the person claims that a litter of 10 babies were born and you get three because you get a third, how do you know that there weren't 20 babies that were born? The person could claim that no babies were born and there really were babies that were born and they're just keeping them off for themselves. In fact, really bad things can happen. Your animal could end up dying when it's on the breeding loan. And then what happens? I've even seen situations discussed in the online reptile forums where a breeding loan has gone bad. Not only did it not produce any babies, but the person who had the animal on loan decided not to return it. And they simply skipped town and now the person can't get their animal back who loaned it out for the breeding. So a lot of things could potentially go wrong with a breeding loan. Uh, I've never done a breeding loan myself and I would highly recommend that you try to just acquire the animal you need for the breeding by buying it outright rather than entering a breeding loan. About the only circumstances that I would consider doing a breeding loan are if it was like a really really super rare locality boa that only myself and the other person have the only animals in the country that are available and I knew and trusted that person. But other than that, I would really recommend you to strongly think twice before entering into a breeding loan. So there you have it. Those are a few situations that you probably want to avoid in order to avoid getting scammed or entering into a relationship that might not be satisfactory. I hope you never become involved in any of these types of situations. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.